A message from the Caribbean Child Support Initiative, a program of CARICAD with support from the Bernard Van Lee Foundation. Take good care of the children. A picture is worth a thousand words. Got it? Taking care of us can be so easy. Take good care of the children. Welcome back as we continue our discussion on the Roving Caregiver Program, a program that has proven impact on child care, child development, parenting education, nutrition, um, long-term educational um, impact, as well as crime, delinquency, and a number of other socioeconomic factors, which as a region, the Caribbean really cannot ignore. We're looking now at issues related to sustainability and of course in that context the issue of continuing funding comes up as the primary financer of the Roving Caregiver Program, the Bernard Van Leer Foundation, will not be sustaining this program beyond the year 2011. We've spoken a little bit about the importance of gov governments being involved in this program and already they are but we now need to look at how do we access continuing funds. It seems that government will be uh, a primary issue, but also how do we include the public sector, private sector, civil society organizations. Mr. Gregory Degans is Managing Director of the National Bank of Dominica, and he is very passionate about supporting the Roving Caregivers Program. We as business people, we have a responsibility to the community and the, the, the country in which we operate where we make our profits. It is just not the government and these fair ladies who seem to be the one pushing the cause and begging everybody globally. Where is our commitment as a private sector to ensure that we have a better quality of life for our people? I gave the regional grouping a commitment, I think it's 18 months ago, largely, that I will take night and make day right across this region to ensure that this program is replicated just as how you see Kentucky Fried as a franchise. As we continue to talk about sustainability and the need for funding, we can see that there are individuals who are extremely inspired and passionate, inspired by and passionate about the results of the Roving Caregivers programs. But we now have to concern ourselves about funding and sustainability. And so back to our panel, lady and gentlemen. Um, what are some of the models that we are looking at? What are some of the options that clearly lay in front of us? Before we, before we get to the models, yes. you know, reflecting on Mr. Degan's statement, yes. it has been said that it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And I think a fundamental point that needs to be made is that early childhood provision, unlike other sectors in education, is not, has not traditionally been seen as a responsibility of the state, yes. particularly the zero to three range. And as I said earlier, in one of the earlier segments, it really is foundational for educational success later in life. In that context, I think we need to understand that the challenge in universalizing early childhood provision is to ensure that everybody plays their role in making this possible. It is not a, a, a clear-cut niche like primary education or secondary education where it is either state provision or private schools. In this arena, it is civil, so it is the community, it is the yeah. parents, it is the government, it is the private sector. So we have a unique opportunity here to form a coalition of partners that can ensure that in the Caribbean, 
the Caribbean village yes. lays that educational yes, foundation. Yes, it also gives us a tremendous opportunity to create a focus on our children. Exactly. And, and we're better. Yeah. We're asking about the funding and, and two issues. One of the things we've got to be clear on, we have something on the ground now. Yes, so that works that very works. well. And works very well mm -hmm. and is cost effective. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things that we got to do is to make sure that going forward we sustain all of these programs and ensure that they can continue. So any type of funding that we're putting in, a first priority has to be to ensure that the um, all six um, um, areas, but particularly the four I think we're focusing on in, in this grouping, um, the, the St. Lucia, Grenada, uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines um, and Dominica, that those programs are funded and that the process is there beyond 2011. Uh, and so I think there is what I would call a shorter, medium term and a longer term picture. And as you look going forward, um, taking into consideration private sector and public sector partnerships, um, the models that you can find for funding as, as per, I think we talked about the possibility of a regional fund that could provide some opportunities for private sector participation. But the key for the private sector is going to be um, how do we know that our money is going to be well spent. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we have to do is to show with this model it works, we can, we can deliver, now let's make sure that we have the ability. Maybe on individual projects, you may find some of the funding maybe, you know, projectized. You know, it may be a specific area that somebody wants to focus on. How do you fit this into the process going forward? Mm -hmm. I think the, the role of the private sector is clear. And as Mr. Degans made in, did in his presentation, he was passionate. passionate. There's a lot of passion in the private sector. I think, as I said earlier, this is an issue that has to be put on the table. I do not think that there are many um, persons in the private sector who understand, first of all, the, the vulnerability of this group. Yes. And secondly, the, the impact that this program can and has had in the past. And as, as Dr. Jules pointed out, it's dead cheap, really, mm -hmm. in the context mm -hmm. of other um, contributions. So that's the first thing we need to do, is to increase the awareness within the private sector of the critical importance of that intervention. Yeah. As far as funding is concerned, as I've indicated earlier, the private sector, um, the corporations are, are writing checks every day. And I'm sure that they could be very easily persuaded of the need to put this particular program at the top of the list of priorities. What do you think would take, what would it take to get that to happen, you think? I think it's really important. I can't overemphasize um, how it is possible for us to live in a society and, and drive through the cities and the villages and not be aware of the extent of the, the, the really dire conditions under which these kids at a very young age and their parents live. So it's, mm -hmm. it's important for us to find a way to engage the private sector and to get them to realize the need, the, the, the really critical need for us to intervene. And it has an impact on us. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, the private sector will be beneficiaries yes. um, from the results of the interventions. Yes. Really, really important. Yes. <laughs> I get it, Mr. Lawrence. I really do get it. And I'd like to transfer that to you, our viewers, and to invite you. Um, this program has actually been tested in the Caribbean quite widely, in Dominica, um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, uh, Jamaica, Belize, Dominica. Did I say Dominica already? But in these countries, you now have the opportunity to visit the website, to take a look at what's actually happening with the program, go on a tour. Um, there isn't anything that we have that really so profoundly produces results for our social and economic future in the region. And so we invite you to learn more, to find out more, and to see how you can participate in the funding of this program, which we know must continue. We'll be right back. <laughs>